What's up everyone? It's your friendly neighborhood French Canadian and today I'll show you how to make a Shiki Ryugi build from the Garden of Sinners. This build is based on a Shiki Ryugi from the Garden of Sinners. Now I don't know how popular this anime is compared to other type moon stuff like Fate, but she is definitely one of my favorite characters. And the best way I can describe her, and I'm not kidding when I say this, is a serial killer with a split personality who can see death. Who else but type moon? would have come up with something like that. She uses a Tanto blade as her main weapon, but she also uses a katana in one of the movies. So of course, we'll be using the Wakizashi a dagger, which is a Tanto blade, as well as a katana that needs no introduction, for better or for worse, the Moonville katana. I thought the look of the attacks really fit well with her, and we're going to use the uh, Wakizashi to parry uh, as well as to power stance, because the wakizashi, even though it's a dagger, you can power stance it with a regular size katana. And we'll also use the cold affinity, so when we're power stancing, we'll be able to trigger frostbite on enemies. Now, Shiki's whole thing is that she can see death and that she can quickly dispose of her enemies, and I think the moon veil is one of the katanas that can actually do that in this game, as you'll see. You won't have a lot of trouble taking out enemies. The moon veil is loved and hated, for that reason exactly, it's pretty powerful. The parry window in this game is pretty tight, but it also depends on what you use. So bucklers have more frames, so you have a bigger window to parry, whereas daggers only have seven frames to parry. If you're in the fighting game community, it's not a lot. It's actually not something that humans can react to. So you have to know the opponent sits, uh, you need to know the attack that you can parry, because you can't parry any attack, and so it just requires a lot of knowledge about the game, but it's also really rewarding and really fun to learn because you start to really pay attention to the enemy's patterns and it's so much easier to, to actually avoid attacks when you're paying so much attention to what the opponent does, right? Now, obviously, when you parry an enemy, you can get a critical on them. So we will use a talisman that will increase the damage we do. And with the Moonville's Ash of War, you can actually also stance break enemies with it if you hit them enough. Now it's not as quick as something like Flame of the Red Mains. I think it took me about five or six hits on uh, the Godskin Noble, but it's still something that's good to have. I just love that you can use this build to either be in your face power stance and then parry your opponent, or that you can use the Moonville's really powerful Ash of War at a distance because the distance at which it travels is pretty far. And so you can really play uh, the way you want to play and it keeps the entire playthrough pretty fun as well. As for the stats at level 150, you can definitely switch a Vigor, Mind and Endurance around depending on what you prefer, especially if you're PvPing, but at level 150 I have a 44 Vigor, 30 Mind, because we'll be using a lot of FP with the Moon Veil, and a 25 Endurance. Now to be able to use the Moon Veil you need 12 Strength as well as 18 Dexterity, and our Intelligence is at 80 because that is the soft cap. Now you're probably wondering why I don't have any points in dexterity past the 18 to be able to actually use uh, the moon veil. The reason behind that is you don't really need it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. And because we'll have cold affinity on our wakizashi, that also scales with intelligence and it actually decreases the strength and dexterity scaling once you switch that affinity over. Now you can't do that with the moon veil, but you'll still be dealing a massive damage with the moon veil's ash of war with 80 intelligence. But you know the drill by now, now that I explained to you how the build works, I'll show you where to get everything that you need to make it. Fashion-wise, again, it's a bit hard because uh, she wears a kimono, a blue kimono, and then she wears a red leather jacket over it. And obviously, there's not anything like that in this game, in the base game anyways. And her other outfit is a white kimono. So I chose the lazuli robe because it kind of looks like that. And I'm wearing the perfumer sarong because it just looks like she has boots and uh, no pants, which is pretty much what she wears as well, so it kind of looks uh, more like her. Now, if you don't like the setup, you can definitely do... You could do Albrecht's robe, altered maybe? I don't know, I don't think it looks right. But the preceptor set altered could definitely work as well. I was thinking of the Snow Witch robe, but it looks too flowy, too bulky, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right either. So to me, I think the Lazuli robe is the best one. I really wish I could take that freaking sash off, but you know, it is what it is. For the weapons, as I mentioned in the first part of the video, 
we have the beautiful moon veil and honestly i know people hate that weapon but look at it it's so freaking beautiful honestly i love katanas and in our offhand we'll have the wakizashi tanto blade to get the moon veil you want to come to caleb and you see this cave right here you want to make your way there and defeat the magma worm boss in that cave and you'll get the moon veil. So you want to take the rod view balcony and then you want to come up here and as you see where I put the waypoint you just want to make your way down there and into the cave. And that's how you get the Moon Veil. To get the Wakizashi Tanto Blade, uh, you want to make your way to Kaido again. Take the uh, Kaido Highway North side of Grace right here. And these are the Dragon Runes and you want to make your way here to get into another cave.
And that is where you get the wakizashi. Excuse me. Let's look at the talismans. First we have the curved sword talisman, which enhances guard counters. So if you want to use the parry a lot with the wakizashi, then this will be really useful as uh, you'll do a lot of damage with the critical. Uh, then we got the magic scorpion charm to increase her with the moon veil. Then we have Millicent's Prosthesis, which boosts dexterity but also raises our attack power with each successive attack. And finally, we have the Assassin's Cerulean Dagger. So every time we do a critical hit on an enemy, it restores our FP. That will help a bit with FP management. You can also use the Carrion Filigree Crest, which will make the Moonveil's Ash of War take less FP, but it's really up to you. I don't think you need to use both of them because we will be spending like 35 points in mind anyway, so. I think it's fine. And to get the Curved Sword Talisman, you want to get to Stormvale Castle. And after you defeat Margit and you make your merry way to go and fight Godric, uh, you'll come across a Banished Knight in a cellar, uh, one that you're locked in. And basically this talisman is in a chest in that room exactly. Now the Magic Scorpion Charm, you have to finish Celibus's questline completely. For Millicent's Prosthesis, you also have to finish her questline completely, but you also have to side with your sisters and not her. But you can also get this earlier than the Halic Tree area. If you meet Millicent in the Windmill Village, right here, uh, once you've progressed her quest that far, and once you've beaten the Godskin Noble in that area, uh, you'll be able to talk to her and defeat her, and you'll get that talisman as well. Now for the Assassin's a Cerulean a Dagger, you want to go to the Black Knife Catacombs that is located in the Leonia area, right here. And you want to defeat the Black Knight Assassin. So now you should have everything you need to make this build. And yes, I hear you, I see the comments, I will try to do um, a Demon Slayer build. Uh, definitely Tanjiro, probably Inosuke as well. So that's definitely coming in the future. So if you want more Elden Ring videos, more builds like this, there are plenty more on my channel. Other than that, have yourself a wonderful day, and I'll see you all very soon.